right. We're going to go ahead and get things started here. Uh, we'll start off with our touch coordinator here. First off is Rachel Harris. All right. We're going to go ahead and get, get things started here. Uh, we'll start off with our touch coordinator here. First off is Rachel Harris. coordinator and I hope that I have your support. I was the Flancy coordinator for my sorority um, at the University of Michigan so I kept track of 150 girls meetings every college. So I think I can do it at a little larger scale for 800 students. And I'd like to change like the mantra of like the touch hours. I know that everyone wants to get to 50 hours to like, get on their team's letter and everything but I want it to be something that you enjoy doing and that you don't feel like oh like, I have to go you know paint for four hours. Um, I want to see something that you are going to enjoy so that when you go to interview for residencies, you can talk about how you were involved in your community and how um, it impacted you or how you enjoyed it. Um, so finding something that you enjoy doing community service, but also you happen to get, you know, the touch hours for that community service. Um, so I hope that we can kind of change the mantra of touch. And I know that the guidelines nationally are kind of vague, and I know that community doctors worked really hard to um, kind of make those more guidelines more strict or more um, concrete. And so I know that she's working on like a handbook right now, and so I hope to continue that so that for next year you guys have more um, guidelines for what counts and what doesn't count um, so that there's less ambiguity. So thank you. I wonder if that was our one candidate for touch coordinator, so congratulations, Rachel. Uh, next, we'll have the SGA historian uh, candidate, Samantha Frazier. So I'm running for historian, and I'm involved with most of the activities on the campus anyways, so sending out an email to tell everyone else about the campus activities shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> and I, I like taking pictures, so that's a plus for a job of a, a historian, and that's really all I got. So please vote for me. Thank you. Samantha is also running in a pose, so congratulations, Samantha. Um, next up, we'll have the SGA Treasurer candidate, Ryan Stradley. All right, so most of you know me, my name is Ryan Stradley, currently the Class 2017 Treasurer. So I uh, give you a quick review about my background. So I did work for a Wall Street firm. I did run my own financial consulting firm, so I'm happy to help you guys out. And then while I have the floor, I'll also talk about what I've done so far and what we've done as class officers for the class of 2017. So before the school year started, we actually got together, set some goals. We wanted to go ahead and roll over as much funds as possible the next year for the purpose of board review materials. And we also wanted to put on some speeches for you to learn about financial management as well as healthcare policy. So to date, we put on successfully two lectures. We brought in two guest speakers and provided lunches for everyone, not just 2017 members, but everyone in the WP Song community who wanted to attend. And we've done so at no cost to the class. So as of right now, leaving behind six thousand, oh, actually over six thousand dollars, and after a fundraiser, possibly seven thousand for you guys to use next year, whatever you want. Hopefully, the class fundraiser for the for board review materials. I apologize. So glad I have your support. Hopefully, I do. If not, enough. So. All right, thank you. Well, as the trend continues, Ryan is running opposed, so congratulations, Ryan. Uh, next, we'll have the uh, SJ Secretary candidate, Laura Williams. Our options. Um, I'm Laura. I know most of you. I wrote a speech, but I'm not going to bore you for four minutes. 
so I'm qualified. I've done this stuff before. I promise. I started um, the Gold Medical Brigades at Loyola University of Chicago. Brought a bunch of kids down to Honduras. Taught them how to recruit drugs and doctors. And so I've done. I've played secretary. I've played mom. I've done it all. So I'll do that again next year. Um, and basically, so I asked my brother what I should say because I didn't really say much. He's 11, so. He told me to get up here, and mind you, he thinks that secretaries still sit there and write as quickly as possible with the number two pencil. He said, just get up there, Laura, and tell them, hey, I got the best handwriting in the damn world. So step off, bro. All right, now things are going to get interesting. We have some contested positions. All right. First one up is going to be SGA Vice President, and our first speaker is going to be Miles Medina. Hello, my name is Miles Medina and I'm running for SGA Vice President. The Vice President has a variety of responsibilities, taking on the duties of the President in his or her absence, overseeing all student elections, serving as student senate liaison, chairing SGA club organization meetings, and chairing the SGA grant request committee, which I have served as the senator for the past eight months. During my tenure as a senator, I've been involved with approving applications for the SGA for WBS one clubs. We took an application from several clubs and determined if their events reached the criteria for their grant. This involved ensuring that the events donated at least 10% of the proceeds going to schools, school groups, or community service. All of which required a definite time commitment that I'm willing to sacrifice as a student in good academic standing. Before considering this position, I consulted Dr. Edelman. He told me of two major points of the position. Unfortunately, None of his points mentioned that the position required experience in singing Milan soundtracks, jumping on tables, or winning any male pageants. Instead, the first point was that it was essential for your vice president to have a voice. As a senator, I was the voice of the class of 2017 to both the class president and the SGA. I would communicate with our class president, Chase Farrell, of any complaints, suggestions, or urgencies that have been brought up to me and thus brought up to SGA meetings. I've been successful only in the class of 2017 know that I'm available. I've had several students come up to me with their issues that they thought should be raised. If I have the resources to resolve their issue, I utilize the relationships I've cultivated with the faculty to determine a suitable solution. If not, I relay those issues to the correct leadership in order to resolve this solution. Because of this experience, I am seeking a much larger role in the curriculum, a role that not just lets me to liaise, but a role that allows me to take instant action. One of the most important voices I will have as vice president would be echoing the concerns of our student clubs and organizations. Representing the student body is an immense honor that should not be taken lightly. If elected, I will ensure that our voice as a student body is heard by our faculty. Our faculty has been incredible in the reception of our concerns, and I'd be honored to be part of that process. Our education is dynamic. We are always looking for ways to improve our curriculum. Being liaison to our class president has been an incredible experience. However, as vice president, I would have a much more active role in improving our curriculum by directly communicating with the faculty, directly communicating with the leadership in order to make these dynamic changes. This extends beyond the curriculum. With our board scores in mind, I'll work with the faculty to ensure that we are adequately prepared for the boards, having the solid foundations necessary to utilize individual board prep materials. The student body will not only be represented to our faculty, but the students in positions across the country. Both the president and the vice president attend four national conferences where ideas are shared between the SGA leaderships and all of the med schools across the country. Thus, having our voices heard on a much larger scale, a national scale, beyond the level of our academics. Being that voice for the students is a cr critical aspect of being vice president, and I know that I will convey our best interests when it's time to do so. The second point was that your vice president should be someone without an agenda. Your vice president's agenda should be your interests, the student's agenda. 
All of us as student doctors have the goal of graduating here with our DO degree, and I'm no exception. At the end of our medical education here at WBSOM, we'll be, we will be practicing osteopathic positions. However, it is our path towards that degree that will dictate how prepared we are when it comes to the real world. Our paths will be shaped for the next few years together. With that being said, my agenda is solely your interest. Our faculty is paving the way with the medical education that we need to become the physician we want to be. I would be privileged if I can assist in the development of our medical education here at WBSON. Be it any aspect of the curriculum, suggestions to the faculty in any way, shape, or form, I ask that you allow me to be in the position to better our institution. Allow me to be your voice and trust me with your agenda. Trust our agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. And uh, next up, we'll have our next candidate for SJ Vice President, Ari Schaefer. Hey, what's up, guys? So, um, when I went home last week and I, I told my wife, I was like, hey, Chris, you sit in front of me. He, he nominated to run for Vice President. And she was like, oh, that's great. Who are you running against? And I was like, well, I'm actually running against um, Miles Medina. And um, my wife stops me and goes, wait, isn't that the guy who won Mr. WBSON? I was like, yeah, it is. And she just makes a noise. Mm. Are, are you sure you want to, Ari? Are you sure you're up for this? So, but Miles is a great guy. You guys just know. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Ari Schaefer. Just like Joe said, I'm from Sacramento, California. Um, as I came to interview here at WBSOM, I feel like one of the most attractive things to me, like it was for, for many of you guys, I'm sure, was the um, the, the sense of community, um, the sense of support that I felt from the faculty and student body. It made me feel at home. And I thought, what a perfect environment to study, to learn, and to stress. In, as we all know. Um, that is um, the type of environment that I hope to preserve and strengthen, and that is why I want to run for Vice President. I wanted to um, share with you guys a couple of um, some of my past experiences to show you why I could, how I could benefit you guys in this role. For two years, I taught Portuguese and was a language coordinator responsible for around 10 teachers and 100 students. In this role, I had the opportunity to teach um, and lead and to promote unity in the classroom. In college, I was a, a group leader in one of the largest undergraduate cadaver labs in the nation, responsible for training new teaching assistants how to effectively teach nearly 1,000 students each semester. In this role, I had the exciting responsibility to try and find new and better ways to help students apply valuable knowledge. Um, and to top it off, I was the student body president of my eighth grade class. Right? And so, my wife actually told me not to put that too, but gosh, that was a good year for me. So that was fun. Um, over the past couple of months, I've, I've gotten to know a lot of you guys. Um, I can honestly say I'm so impressed with the quality of personnel that our school has put together. Um, we have a great student body. I respect you guys and look up to your examples. For that reason, I would love to have the opportunity to serve each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Ari. So there are your two candidates for SGA Vice President. And now we'll move on to candidates for SGA President. We will start off with Chase Farrell. Thank you all for coming and for those watching online. Um, my name is Chase Farrell and I'd like to be your next SGA president. About a month ago, a mental image struck a very deep, very real fear within me. It was the face of Honey Boo Boo. Allow me to explain. Um, I knew med school would be a challenge and that I'd be exposed to new things, but being an emergency replacement judge for the Miss Snowflake Youth Beauty Pageant at Allegheny High School 
was certainly the strangest challenge that I faced this year. The plea for help from the pageant had come from uh, Katie Dempster, our Touch Hours coordinator, because the pageant was a fundraising event for a local high school marching band. The truth is that I have qualms about young children being paraded around and judged on such an intangible thing as beauty. After when someone asked me, Chase, if you're against child beauty pageants, why did you do it? For me, it was simple. The event was hours from starting. It had three judges back out at the last second. They needed help. They were desperate. Now, I tell you the story because I believe it represents how I've handled my job as the class of 2017 president and how I'll handle the job as SGA president. I'm responsive and I'm willing to help even if it means sacrificing a bit of my comfort. I ran for class president because I was inspired by all the people that I've met here at WBSOM. And as I've met more of you, that inspiration has grown and it's led me here today, ready to face the demands of the job and asking for your vote as the next SGA president. I know the demands of the position well. I've served on almost every committee that the president is responsible for, planning grand affair, selecting the student DO of the year. Uh, and if you've ever had a chance to read the minutes of the SGA meetings, then you know that I'm an active participant and I don't shy away from asking tough questions, even of the administration with whom I have a good relationship. Um, I've managed to balance these commitments against my schoolwork, curriculum committee meetings, um, my own classes affairs, of course, but I've also gone beyond even these. The presidency is a choose your own adventure and I choose to be adventurous. I've attended board of governors meetings and budget committee meetings so that I am better prepared to fight to keep our tuition level, things like that, keep spending in check. I'm also on the review board for the new HLC accreditation that we're seeking. Along with my officers, Brian mentioned, uh, I organized a mini lecture series on the financial aspects of medicine and medical school. These lunch lectures have been open to all comers, first years, second years, faculty, because we know that WBSOM isn't just a collection of individuals or individual classes. We are a community and we thrive together. Now I have a natural, uh, natural passion for these endeavors and my experience in the working world has honed my ability to manage them. But above all, I strive to be approachable, available, and receptive. Those of you here on campus know that I'm no shut-in and that I attend basically every campus event that I'm able to. I actively participate in my clubs and I'm often helping out with or at least attending uh, the club events of other clubs that I'm not even a member of. I'm out there playing soccer, frisbee, volleyball with you guys. I'm a social guy and it helps me keep tuned in to the emotions and the concerns of my peers. Now it's not all been smooth sailing of course, but I'm quick to admit my mistakes and quick to learn from them. I'm not above apology and I'm definitely not above self-deprecating humor. As many of you will know, based on my MCAT story, the infamous one. Well, each of us will face our own unique challenges in the difficult times ahead. And I'm going to finish with this quote that I uh, used during my speech for the class presidency. But I just love this one so much, so bear with me. And it's uh, by Albert Camus. One always finds one's burden again. But Sisyphus teaches us the higher fidelity. Each atom of that stone, each mineral flake of that night-filled mountain, in itself forms a world. The struggle itself towards the height is enough to fill a man's heart. One mass must imagine Sisyphus happy. Medical school can seem like an eternal uphill battle. Daily we confront the challenge, we exhaust ourselves, and yet each morning we start anew, shouldering the burdens of a new day. Vote for me, Chase Bill and I will work my hardest to ease some of those burdens. We are surely reaching for the heights, and we will surely struggle, sometimes in seeming darkness, but together we will do it with full and happy hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. And now we'll have our final candidate for SGA president, Jake Much. Hi, my name is Jake Much, and today I want to invite you to look inward, because 
you have a huge responsibility today. Today, you get to decide who the leaders of this school will be. So I want you to, to challenge me. I want you to demand of me the best. I want you to raise the bar. And I want you to force me to answer these three questions before my time is up. Why am I here? What qualifies me to run? And why should you even care? This past year, I served as, as the first year curriculum representative. My job was to take the concerns and comments of students and translate them into a cogent and cohesive argument for the faculty. And it has been immensely rewarding. But it's also been very frustrating because there are some problems that just can't be solved at that level. I'm not, not satisfied with those problems where you just pass the feedback along in a hope for the best. It's not enough. It's not enough for the big problems, for the multifaceted problems, for the problems that require new and creative solutions and someone capable of carrying them out. So why do I think I'm capable of carrying them out? Let's put the titles aside for a second. They're not going to help us here. To get things done, you have to be able to resonate with people on a very personal level. And I, I never truly appreciated that. The profound impact that diction and empathy can have on the outcome of the situation until five years ago when I was the impromptu negotiator for a hostage situation. I had a, I was a dialysis technician and I had a patient who was overloaded with fluid. He was in pain. He was tired. He was depressed. He was addicted to drugs and he wanted something we couldn't give him. And I'm an optimist at heart. So I'd like to think that when he brought the lighter to the oxygen line, that he didn't know that all the other patients were on oxygen as well. So what do you do? What do you say when one wrong word, one small spark is all it takes to kill a room full of people? A room like this one. You pull up a chair. You look him straight in the eye. And you tell them the truth. I can't imagine the pain you must be feeling right now, so I won't even try to put words to it. But what I do know is that my time here with you, however short, has been positive. You have positively impacted my life. You have changed it. And I know there are other people who feel the same way. And inch by inch, word by word, that lighter gets closer and closer to my hands until I have it. And we get him the help he needs. It's not about forcing people to do what you want them to do. It's not about giving orders. It's not about being on opposite sides of a table and looking at two different parts of a problem. It's about reframing the problem so that you're shoulder to shoulder looking for a common solution. It takes confidence, yes. But more importantly, it takes compassion because you will never get anything done if you do not care about people. And if I convince you of nothing else today, know that I care. So why should you care? This SGA election, it's not about fundraising and chairing committees. It's not about the Grand Affair. It's not about Tom Week. It's about selecting the leaders who are charged with the task of representing you. I don't want to be some SGA president. I want to be your president. I want to be your representative. I want to be your voice. I want to take your needs to the national level, to go to the conferences, to meet with the other SGA rep representatives to discuss the problems that afflict us and bring back solutions. So I challenge you today, raise the bar. Raise the bar. Demand of us the motivation and drive that is required to lead. Tear our speeches apart. Examine our strengths and our weaknesses. And most importantly, put your conviction, and I mean your full conviction, behind whomever you deem worthy of the task. And if that person today is me, know that I will raise the bar. And I will demand it of every single person you elect because we will make a difference. Because at the end of the day, we all, doesn't matter what, what class you're in, we all want the same thing. To get the best clinical education possible so that we might become not just good physicians, but great ones. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. Um, that is it for our SGA president's nominees. I'll now relinquish my duties to the current SGA treasurer, Cam Meyer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, so now we are going to do our, our speeches for the uh, Board of Governors student representative, which is a very big role for all of us. And, uh, first off, we're going to have Joseph Green.
Thank you, Cam, and thank you, everybody who's watching online or watching at a later date and here in the audience before me today. Um, as Cam said, my name is Joseph Brandt, and I am asking for your vote, the Board of Governors, Student Representative. In my time at WSOM, I have served the student body in various capacities. Last year, as the Vice President of the Class of 2016, and this year, the Student Government Association Vice President. As a voice of the student body to the school's faculty administration, I have taken student concerns through the chain of command until answers were given or solutions were achieved. This has made me very familiar with the inner workings of WVSOM. This basic knowledge about the small office politics that often governs the decisions at WSOM is, in my opinion, an absolute prerequisite for the Board of Governors student representative. As the BOG rep, one of, my one of my duties will be to voice the student opinion about the pros and cons of this new case-based curriculum at the education committees held on Fridays before the general council meeting. I will be the first student who has gone through this curriculum. What better person than someone who has finally sat through this than to explain what has been working and what needs to be changed. Then, during general council meetings on Saturdays, I will observe reports and weigh in on topics that pertain to student life. I am confident I will succeed in this capacity based on my experience at the national level on the Council of Osteopathic Student Government Presidents. There, I have commonly risen to voice my opinion on a variety of issues ranging from the unification of the GME to a potential joint match and to the rising student burden of debt that we all have taken on, just to name a few. In doing so, I expressed my opinions to our student of, of our student population to people ranging from general council members all the way up to Dr. Norman Vinn, the AOA president. It is for these reasons that I am confident I will not hesitate to rise and speak professionally but firmly on issues that define student life here at WBSOM. Additionally, in every leadership position I have held here at WBSOM, I have gone well beyond my required duties to improve our school. Last year, I organized an end-of-the-year party for on-campus staff and students. This year, I took lead I took the main lead on the Governor's Day of Service, and which was our health and wellness scavenger hunt. I've helped to organize multiple educational activities at surrounding area elementary schools, as well as participated in many club-sponsored events, accumulating numerous touch hours to date. To me, the best leaders do not simply hold office. They lead by example. As the Board of Governors rep, I will continue to go above and beyond my required duties of attending all Board of Governors meetings and reporting at the SGA meeting. If elected, I will make myself widely available to the newly elected SGA and help them smoothly transition and aid them with any speed bumps they hit along the way. Ultimately, I will be honored to be your Board of Governors student rep, and I will do everything in my power to honor that position. I am Joseph Grant, and I appreciate you all taking the time to cast your votes. Thank you. Our next candidate, our next candidate is going to be Brandon Bajor. Good afternoon. My name is Brandon Bayshore, and I'd be honored to be next WVSOM Board of Governors representative. Uh, I'd like to start off with a quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson, for those of you who are familiar. Uh, the purpose of life is not to be happy. It is to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, and to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. Now, I generally disagree with the first line, that the purpose of life is not to be happy. But then I got to second year of medical school, started studying for boards, and I realized, oh, that's what he's talking about. What I think he was trying to say is that the purpose is not to worry about your own happiness first, 
but to put others' interests before your own. This is a very important quality to have as Board of Governors representative because I'll be representing your interests as students. The next part of the quote refers to being useful and honorable. This is what I want to, this is why I want to apply for the position next year. As Board of Governors representative, it will be my responsibility to make sure you are adequately represented and have an input into policies that will directly affect our education here at WVSLM. I have two goals as Board of Governors representative. The first is to gather student input prior to the board meetings by releasing a preview of what will be occurring at those meetings and then create an online forum or survey as to what issues are most important to students at that time. The second goal I have as the Board of Governors rep is to make sure that students know what happened at the meetings immediately after they have concluded. My plan is to make a PowerPoint presentation to distribute to the student body as well as hold an open meeting with students to let you know what is going on at the level of the Board of Governors. I'd like to refer back to my original quote for what I believe is the most important part, and that is being compassionate about what you do. There's only so much time that we have in this world, so you should do what you're most passionate about. Someday you'll realize the clock is ticking. Though we are young, we are not that young. One day you'll wake up and realize your dream is fleeting. Sometimes we need to realize these things and need to do what we're most compassionate about. Each hour counts. Every minute is productive. Every second is planned. Hamilton was Treasury Secretary by 34. Zuckerberg was a billionaire by 28. Conversely, Reagan became president at 69. No matter how you make it happen, no matter what the age, know that the clock is ticking. What age will it happen for you? Right now, my own clock is ticking, and I ask myself, what am I most passionate about at this time? I'm compassionate about making sure that our voices are heard to the Board of Governors, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that we are accurately represented, even if that means saying something to the Board of Governors that they might not like to hear. I'd be more than honored to spend my time making a difference for you, the student body, as your representative to the Board of Governors. My name is Brandon Bayshore, and thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you to all the candidates. Um, as you, uh, If you don't know, all these speeches were recorded, and they're going to be sent out to all of the student body, the third and fourth years as well. And at 1 o'clock on the Seoul website, there we will have the voting, and it's just a little link that you can go to when you vote for the candidates. Thank you guys for coming.